The scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It's a scripture that we sometimes just kind of slide over. Um, We don't think too much about what it was like for Jesus, what it was like for John the baptizer. We kind of just read it and it just slips past us. But I want to read for you from the third chapter of Matthew, verse 13 and following. (coughs) Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I want you to know that both repentance and baptism are hard work. It's not easy. Why? Because repentance means I've somehow failed. I've fallen short of the mark. I've sinned. I've broken my trust with God and with man. Do you like to say that out loud? (laughs) You gotta be kidding. I cover it up for years. I don't want anybody to know I failed. I want to just keep it as my own personal little cross that I have to carry. That's not the way God said to do it. God said, repent, which means say it out loud. Say what you feel about being sorry. Say what you mean about making the intention not to make those same mistakes again. Say it out loud. Repent means say it honestly, truthfully, before God. Repent. And then he said, be baptized. Now, There's a little bit of a thing going around these days that says baptism is just sort of an old, ancient custom that no longer carries much importance. You know, baptism doesn't save you. You know that, don't you? Anybody that doesn't know that? Baptism doesn't save you. So why do it? Come on. You get wet. You get in front of people. I don't want people looking at me. I don't want anybody, I mean, it's bad enough to have your hair combed and your face all put on straight, but then when you come up out of that water, you're all wet. You're not looking your best. And you may even have your mother taking a picture of you. Hmm. That's something to remember. Baptism. It's just so much water. I, I remember used, people used to come to me, I don't need to get married that's just a piece of paper that you use. It's just a, just a little piece of paper, a little thing you have to jump through, a little hoop. And then all of a sudden, somebody realized, you know, there's some real value to that. There's some, there's some merit to saying out loud in front of God and all of your family and loved ones, I am going to promise to love you for the rest of my life. There's something, you know, I was just listening to somebody here the other day saying, we do tend to lie once in a while to each other. And if you're married, you usually lie one out of every 10 exchanges that you have with your spouse. I'm sorry, sweetheart. It's called exaggerations or it's called just phoning it up a little bit or dialing it up a little bit too high. One out of 10. 
well, maybe it'd be better just not to get married. Then you wouldn't have to lie. But you know what they told me? For people who are living together and not married, they lie one out of every three. They got even more to cover up. See, there's, there's value to be married. You get more truth out of everybody. Hopefully. I don't know. You may not be interested in this, but I'm in a kind of a quest to figure out who's telling the truth and who isn't. So I'm, I'm learning. I'm trying to study that particular issue. That's my personal goal here recently. But I just want to share with you that commitment has merit. When we talk about being baptized, we're actually saying, I don't feel comfortable doing what God's word says I'm supposed to do. Remember now, John tried to deter Jesus. John's a good man. Jesus said he's one of the best men that ever lived. And he was trying to talk Jesus out of being baptized. He had good reason. Jesus was going to end up being far superior to his cousin John. Why did they go ahead and do it? Why did they do it? Jesus said these words, It is right to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Righteousness is what God wants us to do. God calls us to do the right thing. And when we do that, we're doing righteousness. Does that save us? No. But it has the potential of starting us down a pathway where every time God puts his call upon our hearts, we tend to say, more likely to say, yes, Lord, I will follow you, if we have started by saying, yes, Lord, I will follow you, in the very first thing that he asks us to do. Repent, be baptized. So when we have this thing that we're doing, and we're saying, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't like water. I only shower. I don't take a bath. Yeah, there's all of that. I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know how it's going to feel. I'm going to be embarrassed. All of that. Are you willing to let those things stand in the way of following God's command? It's a simple question. It's a simple question. But I want you to think about the next thing too. As soon as their baptism was complete and righteousness had been fulfilled, Jesus came up out of the water and the heavens opened and the Spirit of God came down in the form of a dove and rested on Jesus. Now, it's probably unlikely that we'll see a dove come down from heaven and land on anyone who's being baptized here today. But the potential exists. (laughs) No, but God's going to open the doors of heaven for anyone who follows. That's what he promised. You give me your obedience. You follow me. You take this step because I've asked you to. I will welcome you. I will put my arms around you. I will comfort you. I will be with you. All those promises come to those who are obedient. And we are obedient as we take the first steps and move forward. Now what I'd like to do, if I, if I could, I'd like to have those people who are going to be baptized, if you'd come forward at this moment, it's going to take us just a minute, you go get the kids, if, if you could come forward for just a minute, we're going to have a word of prayer. I want you to be one of God's special children as well. And if there's anything holding you back, If there's anything that stands between you and Jesus Christ, ask God right now to take it away. Remove it. Wipe it far, far away. 
Let your heart be fully open to receive the infilling of Jesus Christ. He wants to love you with all of his heart. And he wants you to be a part of his family. Would you join with me in a closing prayer as we pray together? Dear Jesus, you're listening to the hearts of a hundred people sitting here in this room calling out to you. You know those who are lifting up their hands in prayer saying, thank you God for making me a child of God. And you smile on them and you lay your hands on them and you bless them. And you hear the prayers of those to say, God, I'm not quite there yet. I'm not quite sure yet. I don't know what the cost is going to be. I'm not sure I'm ready to pay that yet. And we ask that you would just simply be patient with us and let us grow closer to you to the point where we'll finally be able to say, yes, Lord, I'm all yours. And for those who just say, I don't understand what's happening, we ask that your spirit will come in with a deep, long sigh of breath and breathe into their hearts a new insight into the fact that this is not pretend. This is not something that we have to imagine happens. But the doors of heaven open with each person who receives your obedience and your spirit inside. And heaven is permanently changed because another soul has been added to the flock. We ask, Lord, that in every person's life that's here, we will know that you love us and that you're here to take care of us and we'll give you the honor and the glory in every way. Amen. God bless you.